So this looks just like, you know, a regular circulated 1977 Kennedy half dollar coin. Today we're looking at five modern or newer coins that you should be always on the lookout for that can be extremely valuable. So let's just hop right in it guys. This first coin is a no dated Roosevelt dime. And when you look at this coin at first glance, you just think it's a worn out coin. And this is probably one of the easiest errors to ever look for on a coin because all all you have to do is flip the coin over. As you can see, this is one side of the coin. If we flip the coin over, the other side of the coin has a reverse design as well. It is missing that obverse design with Roosevelt's face on it or head on it, right? With the date. So that's why it does not have a date. So there's the two different sides of the coin. Now the coin was struck or the planchet was struck with two reverse dies. And that is an extremely, extremely rare mint error to take place. And that's why the coin sold for over $40,000 at auction. So always check both sides of your coins. That's an easy one to look for. And let's move on to a state quarter from the year 2003. Again, on the obverse of the coin here, this one looks pretty normal, but on the reverse, it looks very distorted, damaged. However, that is a genuine mint error taking place on this coin. This is an Alabama state quarter where the reverse of the coin has been struck through. Now there's all kinds of different strike throughs out there. You can have a coin that was struck through a piece of thread, a cloth, a staple, uh, an object, something at the mint, a piece of scrap. But this is a, a, a strike through where it's taking up the whole reverse of the quarter. And this coin here, graded at a 62, ended up selling for $144 at auction. Moving right along to a Lincoln Penny, one of my favorite coins to talk about with mint errors on them because this one here is something very easy to look for as well. Quick time out. Did you know that data brokers actually sell your information to scammers and spammers and anyone that wants to target you? That's right. Your full name, your email, your address, everything is online. Just do a quick Google search of your name, put your city in, and you can see even your relatives next to your name. You can see your addresses, your former addresses, your emails, all of that sensitive information is available to the public, which you do not want. And that's why I started using today's sponsor of this video, Aura. Aura. That's right. A-U-R-A. Aura. Now, my favorite thing about Aura is that I have all my passwords, my emails. Aura monitors everything. Your credit score, your desktop computer, your mobile device, even your financial stuff. All sensitive information that can be hacked by scammers and spammers. You do not want your identity to be stolen. That's why I use Aura. I actually had a situation with a member in my family that had her identity stolen and it was a nightmare to clean that up. And with Aura, you actually get $1 million in identity theft insurance. So take advantage today, get your two week free trial. They are offering you guys through me, Couch Collectibles, a two week free trial only for you guys watching. So hit that link in the comments below, sign up today, get your two week free trial and find Find out how much of your information is being sold out there and get it all cleaned up. Stay protected with Aura. Click that link below and sign up today. Looks normal on one side of the coin, but as we flip the penny over, you can see it looks distorted and you can't really see the full design of the Lincoln cent on the obverse of the coin. So this coin on the obverse was struck through a capped die. That die is what has the design on it and it comes down and it strikes the design onto the planchet in order to create the coin. So in this case, the uh, die was a cap die. So it's a 1989 Lincoln penny that sold for $95 all because really of that mint error. Now, of course, the condition and the grade can affect the value as well. So if the coin was in much worse condition, it could have sold for less. If it was even higher grade, it could have sold for more. All right. Now this next coin is very, very important. This will go for a couple. Actually, these next two coins are very similar. This is a half dollar. The next coin will be a dime. Uh, you can also look for this on some quarters as well. So this looks just like you know, a regular circulated 1977 Kennedy half dollar coin, most people would see this and not think anything about it. Now, that's probably why it was out, you know, in circulation for years, and it's probably been passed through banks and collections and stuff, and someone 
actually uh, was able to weigh the coin and figure out this was a very valuable mint error coin. So this coin sold for over $5,000 at auction because it is a 1977 half dollar coin that was struck onto a 40% silver planchet. Now in 1976, they made the bicentennial half dollars. Now during that year, they did make some 40% silvers for 1976, the bicentennials. Now, they made non-silver and silver. So the 1977, they did not make silver half dollars for that year. So 1977 should not be silver. So this coin here was accidentally struck onto a silver planchet from the previous year of 1976. Now, keep in mind, all we have to do to find out if we have this coin is to weigh it. If something looks off on, uh, you know, your 1970s Kennedy half dollars, this is what you can do. So a clad half dollar, non-silver half dollar clad is supposed to weigh around 11.34 grams. All right. Now a 40% silver half dollar weighs around 11.5 grams and the 90% silver half dollars weigh around 12.5 grams. So that is a way to tell if you have one. Uh, of course, you can always look at the edge of the coin and things like that. We've got tons of videos on how to distinguish a silver coin from a clad coin. So a $5,000 coin there. Now, if we move on to this Roosevelt dime, this dime is even double the value. This coin sold for over $12,000 at auction because it has the same type of mint error. So in 1965, they did not make silver dimes. 1964 was the last year that they made the 90% silver dime for circulation. So 1965 is not supposed to be silver. However, this particular coin that we're looking at, it was actually struck onto a silver planchet that they used in 1964 and prior. So how do you tell if you have a silver dime? Same way you can look at the edge of the coin, but also we can weigh the coin. So a non-silver clad dime typically weighs around 2.268 grams, around 2.2 to 2.3 grams, right? All right, a silver dime should weigh around 2.5 grams. Now it can be around 2.4, you know, if the coin has been circulated and worn down, it does tend to lose some weight over time. But that's a good way to tell. I mean, uh, a big difference in weights there. Uh, 0.2 grams, 0.2 to 0.3 grams there uh, in, in different uh, weights. So this coin, because it was struck onto a silver planche, it sold for $12,600. So get your coin scales. I have them in the link below. Once you click that link, you could scroll through all kinds of different products and check out what we have available for you guys. All kinds of coin deals and coin supplies. And don't forget to support our sponsor today, Aura, and go get that two-week free trial so you can stay safe out there, guys. And don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Feel free to check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles and this is where I disappear.